Welcome back, everybody, to the Fandalorian Club here on Apocalypse Movies. I almost feel like that music should be a little bit more somber today because we are talking about the final two episodes of The Bad Batch Season 2, uh, episode 15 titled The Summit and episode 16 titled Plan 99. We're going to be getting into our feels, our emotions, um, reactions to these final two episodes and the conclusion of Season 2. Uh, but before we get to that, let's go ahead and uh, just talk a little bit, hang out, see how everybody's doing. Brian, this is the final episode of the Bad Batch Fando. How you feeling, man? Good. Glad you and I both got the memo of navy hats and red colored shirts. Maroon, yeah. Maroon, a little and maroon. red. It's an off shade of red. Um, I'm good. Can't believe they can't. <laughs> my favorite character my favorite character of the batch too yeah so but yeah i'm sure we will spoilers if you're watching this well yeah it's been a week um but yeah other than that i'm good i mean as good as you can be talking about a somber yeah yeah uh we we apologize for not doing this live like we said we were going to uh i take full blame i you keep doing that and i couldn't do it that day either yeah but it was on me it was my decision to end up not doing it something just came up and i wasn't able to do it unfortunately um so we had to result to a pre-recording and just a little bit later but uh, we wanted to get this out because obviously we wanted to talk about this. Like this is, so we're not going to not do the season finale. Yeah. Like this is obviously a very big deal. Um, not just for the show in general, but also in star Wars. Like it's the show has done something that a lot of star Wars or a lot of stories in general probably wouldn't do at all. Uh, we saw it happen in rebels. So we've kind of experienced this before. Um, yeah, don't even, they're, it's heartbreaking, but they do have to be talked about. Uh, this is going to be a very different style of review because we're not only talking about two episodes, but we're also kind of, you know, finishing off season two and talking about kind of what comes next. We're not going to go in any kind of chronological order because it's a little tough to do so, being that it's kind of one big giant episode. But also at the same time, like a lot of stuff happened in this, the the fifteenth episode. But the majority of stuff happened in the 16th episode. Um, and that's just the nature of dropping two episodes at once. Um, but yeah, Brian, before we kind of get into, you know, the the details and talking about some stuff more than others, what was your reaction to watching this last week? Um, to me, this solidifies the second season being better than the first season. I think, personally. I think this season just brought it in every single aspect um which obviously you want that in a show for it to keep getting better um only for them to just rip your heart out at the end um but these two episodes were really good really story driven like really uh, i mean it hit on all fronts emotions action storytelling like it was it was all over the place in a good way though yeah i agree um there's some incredible action in in the 15th episode that's pretty much where the majority of the action does take place mm -hmm. um it's all about the raid of the summit is yeah. what the title of the episode is um there's a there's an obvious name for it but uh, we're just going to name it that for the time being just for uh, ease of access of it. Um, yeah, we learned that uh, the batch has kind of found coordinates to some stuff they need, and and they're going basically on a hunting party. Mm -hmm. um, and they have Echo with them. Um, and so it's the original batch crew back together uh, raiding the summit. Uh, and lo and behold, not just we get an evil scientist who we've really grown to enjoy as far as a villain, we get Tarkin, we get Krennic. It's a it's a summit of some of the biggest imperial leaders, specifically in what feels like the largest, um, like the largest uh, decision making meeting as far as what people are doing. Like 
We have our main villain for Bad Batch who's revolving all about the clone stuff. Then we have Krennic who's obviously dealing with the Death Star. It seems like they're all kind of like each like a star. It's the, it's the head honchos meeting together. Yeah, like they're all in charge of some type of mm -hmm. uh, just group that is deciding on something. Each, and... It's like they're each an arm and a leg. And it's like that all are important and all are attached to this one giant thing in the body yeah. being the empire and the head being the Palpatine. They're like one. They're like the oct like let's, let's let's just say Hydra. They're they're in each leg of an octopus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and Palpatine is the head of the octopus. Right. Here. Yeah. So. Um, but it's very interesting because look, this is people to bomb you for saying leg of an octopus tentacle whatever <laughs> Freaking, they're just going to be typing away little keyboard warriors on their little keyboards go for it i don't care go for it um it's super interesting because like look we we've seen imperial meetings in star wars before but oh yeah um we haven't seen a meeting like this where we it, know who everyone is yeah and like <laughs> the surprise of Krennic was super cool. Like I loved, yeah. even for the split second, it was super cool to see him. Um, well, second time, right? Second time, but also hearing uh, Stardust, Project Stardust, which yeah. I thought was a really cool, just nice little dialogue touch. Um, it, it's just an interesting part of it all. Of like, again, getting to see how this all operates. Yeah. Uh, Cause we don't get to see that in mainstay Star Wars. And this is kind of what the show has been doing. And it's very cool to see. Um, so yeah, the first episode was great action story kind of, kind of set up in a way, but in a very good way, because they're obviously setting you up for something. And the end of the episode leaves our characters, uh, hanging on a wire, essentially on transport. And it's a standoff between troopers and them. And then it cuts to black and we get to the next episode. Yeah. Um, and the next episode and or starts in heartbreak starts. Yeah. It starts in heartbreak. Yeah. Um, our favorite member of the Bad Batch, Tech, who I think arguably has become the favorite of many over this season specifically. How I didn't he, see this coming. He bites the dust. Um, and I call the most heroic way possible, obviously. You oh. know, we talked we talked about leading into this about how Crosshair can possibly save them, or you know, uh, uh, some character, mainly talking about Crosshair coming into play and making a decision to save the Bad Batch. They didn't even meet Crosshair in this episode. They didn't even come into terms with Crosshair because he's still knocked out on a table being experimented on. Yeah. It's, it revolves on Tech, who not didn't just save them by getting the transport to work again, but then saved them again from falling into the abyss, and he fell into the abyss. Did you know the second that he started walking away on the wire the second i saw him leave the transport to like cross to the other side i was like he's done well it, it was solo all over again <laughs> yeah that's fair i just that? i yeah. i just immediately it was like even if like he gets it going like it's gonna take off without him so i thought oh maybe he's gonna get captured or something Cause it's going to, he's going to restart it and it's just going to go. It's not like it, it's going to be like, okay, it's on pause for you to walk back. So I just assumed he might get captured or something. And then it was worse. Yeah, no, it was, it was not, uh, it was not a fun way to experience. That's, or it's not a fun thing to experience. Um, and it like in the best way possible, it's an incredible death. It is like, it's, it's a very it's a heroic death. It's a very strong death. Because that moment of that line, that beautiful, beautiful line, when have we ever obeyed orders? Um, and then he calls out Plan 99. He makes a decision to cut, uh, to shoot the other transport that's hanging on for dear life. And everything starts to uh, fade from there. I mean, we hadn't talked about tech dying. I think we, we obviously talked about uh, Crosshair and we threw out the idea of Hunter. Um, we knew that Wrecker wasn't going to die. We knew that Echo wasn't going to die. Um, Hunter and Crosshair were the two that were kind of always pointing like in that direction. You should have never seen the amount of story. Yeah, like he was the focus of a lot this season for sure. Anytime it even with it, it reminds me of the old like reality TV show competition trope that if they're getting a lot of screen time in the episode, they're either going to do something like 
incredible and win or they're going to get sent home. That's what the challenge in Survivor does. A hundred percent. They tip it off just a tad bit. Same with Big Brother, too. Yeah, it's kind of annoying at times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we didn't expect it because it's not reality television. No. Like, sometimes characters just get the spotlight more than others. Mm -hmm. And I think because tech always seemed a little bit more innocent than the rest, it never felt like they would go there with that character. Um, because he's not the leader like Hunter. He hasn't done the bad things like Crosshair. He's a little nerdy you know? guy. Yeah, he's just kind of like sometimes in the background, but also in the foreground a little bit. Um, I'm just pissed off they killed the one character with glasses in the galaxy. Oh, come on, Brian. No, there's another character with glasses. We meet her later on in the episode. Or we've met her early, but she she's going to be a huge part of season three. I guess. I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, Tech... Uh, R.I.P. Tech. Rest in peace, my friend. Uh, we will miss you dearly. Um, the Bad Batch will definitely never be the same. That's for sure. Um, I'm... I'm... like He's not coming back, Brian. I was like, I didn't see a body. He's not coming back. <laughs> we saw we saw broken glasses is what we saw. I know. Dude, that was rough. Mm -hmm. Dude, he... Uh, what is it? Hemlock? Hemlock, yeah. Is a nasty villain. Mm -hmm. Like, not... Like... In the way he talks to whoever's doing I love his it. voice. I love it. I'm just like, it, it, it's giving me like Joffrey where it's like one of those characters you just, oh, like I hate that character. Like anytime they come on screen. And I mean, those are te are the best. It gives characters. me more Cersei. Well, I just meant like an infamous, an easy to hate character. Cersei. Like it's just like. You're just like, God, I hate that person so much. Like, it's not even because even uh, like Krennic, it, it wasn't so much. He was like, ah, I hate you. It was just like he just had like style and stuff like that. And Tarkin's just Tarkin. But this guy, you just like are like, God, I hope someone blasts him out of the sky <laughs> like something. So yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um He's not a fun villain to to be around for the Bad Batch, but he's a great villain for the story. Yes. And he's going to be huge part of season three, which we are 100 percent getting oh, now. Um, but before we get to all that, the next part of all of this is the Bad Batch goes back to what's considered their home base, kind of grieving, going through the motions a little bit mm -hmm. in their own ways. And just as we predicted, uh, what seemed like 12 episodes ago, uh, Sid outs the bad batch yeah um, she, she outs mind. them hemlock and his uh his troops uh raid their base the uh sid's sid's facility and um wreckers captured echoes captured hunter and um omega get away hunter eventually gets captured but omega when she should have ran stays behind because she's part of the bad batch and tries to do what she can she gets captured. Uh, before we get to the kind of ending process of all of this, let's talk about the Sid stuff. There's, I mean, there's not a lot to talk about. We predicted it, but um, sleazebags be sleazebags, right? Yeah. Uh, the only thing I am kind of like, eh, about this is like, why? Why did they go back to her? Like, they have made it for the last, like, four-ish, three episodes, like, yeah, we are flat done with her. Like, we're not ever seeing her. Like, and it just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, they had, I don't remember her name. The one that Wanda Sykes is voicing. Mm -hmm. um, I immediately was like, why didn't they just go back to her? Like, Probably. why did they Why did they go back to Sid? Like, of all people, like, I, it just could have been, like, could have been like a distance thing. Maybe. You know, we see that in Star Wars where some planets and places are too far out of reach to get to in a certain amount of time. And they were obviously on the run. Yeah. Um, so maybe they just needed to get somewhere fast and Sid just could have been closer in distance, but yeah. we'll never know, you know? No, I mean, it's not, is it that big of a deal? No, but it was just like, at, when I saw it, I was like, wait, why are they back at Sid's and not mm -hmm. at the other person's? But yeah. it's funny. It never crossed my mind until you brought it up. No. Yeah. That was well. Cause I mean, I, the second I saw Sid, I was like, okay, here's the betrayal part. But I was just, in my mind, I immediately was like, why did they go back to her? Like, they made it clear the last, like, three episodes she was not someone they wanted to deal with. And they really got along with the other one. So, 
I don't know, but it's it, it's nitpicking. I really don't care. Like the oh, the main point was to show the betrayal and all that. So and did you happened. did you uh, did you like the betrayal? How it was kind of set up and told. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much exactly how I expected it to be. Like she they were going to be in the bar and some she was going to at some point have tipped someone off. And so, I, I mean, it wasn't. Do you feel like she tipped them off or she had her hand forced? A little bit of both. Yeah, I think her hand was forced more so. Probably a little bit. I think that for the most, they kind of like figured it out and was like, either you help us or something like that. So yeah, I guess. I'm thinking of like, they they forced her hand in the sense of like, we won't shut you down or destroy what you have if you give them up. A hundred percent. Like that type of thing, you know? They would have destroyed her bar. Yeah, so... Um. Yeah, I just uh, and it makes me feel better about Sid when I think of it that way. Uh, yeah, just, if 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 you're gonna like, <laughs> like if you don't have a choice, okay, I feel a little better, a little, a little bit. Better. But it, like, and I think she even says sorry, right? Like, well, she she, like, she comes to them flat out and says, just basically like puts a hand on your shoulder and says, "I'm sorry for what's about to happen." Yeah, it's so, very much the uh, it's it's like Lando in Empire Strikes Back. It's yeah. very Lando like. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly almost how mm-hmm. that is. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like, obviously. But that's the Empire's MO. They've been doing that for years. Yeah, too. I mean, that's, that's like plan number one. Krennic did it in Rogue One. Yeah, that's like their bread and butter. Like, it's okay, we're they just going to blow they must you to hell. That in Imperial, the Imperial Academy. Oh, 100%. 100%. That's like day one lecture. Yeah, hundred <laughs> um, percent. Okay, so look, everything happens here at the bar. Uh, Omega's captured. Uh, the Bad Batch is captured, um, or maybe not captured, just held, held to position until they leave, and they're they left were, like, there, being escorted to. Yeah, they're just left there. So the next big part of all of this is we get to Mount Tantus, hmm. and Omega is there. Uh, Nala say is there. Hemlock basically says, "I got what you want." I got what you need. Let's get to it. Um, and we also learn big, big part of all this. And I'm forgetting her name, so I apologize. Oh, the um, the assistant. The assistant is uh, I don't know. Emery. Emery. Yeah, Emery. I don't know how to say it. Emery Carr. I think it's Emery. So Brian, fun fact: the actress who voices her played Queen Amidala in the prequels. Not Amidala, the other queen in the prequels. Like live action? Yeah. Really? Yeah. She either played the the other queen or a stand-in for Voice Amidala. Keisha Castle Hughes. I'm pretty sure she played oh, she's the stand-in pretty. for. She, oh, Natalie. she is the actress who played Queen Up. Oh God, Apu Apu. Not Apu- even going to attempt it. Not even going to attempt it. Yeah, Apu Yelana, whatever. In uh, episode three. Yeah, oh, my God. Go. She's the young one. Yeah. She's the one at the funeral. Yeah. Got it. So super cool. Super cool run around. Um, kind of you know, circle back to her. But anyway, I, either way, we learned that uh, mm. she was uh, uh, technically she. Well, depending on where Boba Fett is, technically, she was the first ever clone that isn't a Jango Fett replica. Well, or a lady too. Well, yeah, the first girl clone, but she's probably older than Boba Fett, I would imagine, at this time. Because Boba Fett's in his teenage years by now, uh, late probably. teens. She's got to be like 20s, late 20s, somewhere around there. Either way, she's the first woman clone. She's older than Omega. She's the sister, from what we know, anyway. Um, and it's so funny that. You, you take the glasses off. She looks exactly like Omega. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so funny what glasses. And I said this the other day on, on one of our shows, but you look so different with glasses on. It's so true. Even in animation, it just changes a person. Um, but mean, Brian, I don't know if you noticed. Did you notice that they were tech glasses? That they're very tech like. Oh, they are. Well, I mean, I knew they were like upgradey, but I didn't. I mean, they that's are like hard. that's just like a, a hint sitting there the entire time that we didn't notice. Yeah, they were like tech glasses. Damn. But thoughts, man. I mean, look, Omega's got a sister. We have another clone involved. What do you think? 
Uh, I mean, it definitely throws a wrench in a lot of stuff. Um, and that is very much obviously like, hi, we're going to definitely have a season three. <laughs> the way like that gets dropped, obviously. Um, I also find it very interesting that it didn't seem like Hemlock cares about like, or does needs. he know that she's a clone? I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know if he, if he knows that she's a clone. I, I, I don't, I have no idea. My thing is that I'm, I was more taken aback by is like, he doesn't seem to like actually care or want or need Omega other than just to bargain with. I mean, like she essentially, like I thought he was going to like make it very clear. Like I'm going to do experiments on her or unless there's something special about her. We don't know. There could be something special that makes her different from Emery and Boba that we don't know about. Like, why does why is Nala say so protective over her specifically? Is it because she kind of has a motherly figure over her? Or is there something about Omega that makes her stand out? Yeah. I mean, he was just basically kind of like saying like, because it was it was Tonwi, right? That or no? I always met. It's Nala. Say. It's Nala. Say. Nala say. Yeah. Nala say. So I always mix everyone up. Tonwi died. Yeah, I know. I always he... mix. I lit. I could have said um, freaking Lama Sue or. Oh wait, maybe it's Lama Sue. Oh God. No, Lama Sue is the guy one. Okay, Lama. Okay, just making sure. Lama Sue was the prime. Dude. That that I knew. Dude. That one I knew. Camino names. Just shoot him out the window. Now. I always oh, mix up. The girls. I don't I hope, know. I hope it's Nala say when I sound like idiots this whole time. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up. Um, but uh, no, no, no. It is. It's Lama Sue because she oversaw the production. Like she was. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, it was very interesting to me. Uh, basically, because it's like she's kind of just he's just like bending her arm. Mm-hmm. Her very large arm with Omega. No, let's say, thank God. Is it? Oh, yeah. Shit. No, no, no. We, that's what we've been saying. Oh, didn't I change? Oh, did we've I, been I, saying no, let's say the whole time. Okay. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I always, I always like panic in my names with those two. But yeah. Do more, more siblings. It would be kind of dope if he didn't know. And then I would like, really love it if he didn't know. And she's kind of just been sitting there the whole time. Maybe like so would I as like a secret agent. That'd be so dope. And uh, what's her face knows maybe. Yeah, like what? If, I, no, I'll say a hundred percent has to know if Hemlock oh, doesn't, yeah. uh, because she was probably responsible for Emery. Yeah. Um, I mean, at this point, like Emery hasn't done anything to make me believe that she's full blown Empire blood anyway. Like she's just kind of been bossed around doing yeah. things for Hemlock. So yeah. it leaves the door open for Hemlock not not knowing and, and her just sitting under his nose the entire time. Yeah. I'm just it'd be I, very cool. It'd be very cool. Yeah. I mean Yeah, I have freaking no idea. But I, I just realized, Brian, as I was doing my research that we didn't talk about how tech basically died because it was Saw Gerrera's fault. Yeah, I mean, and they're just throwing dirt on like hating Saw Gerrera for me. But like, I mean, he he was he was basically responsible for it. Oh so. yeah, basically. Like, yeah. I mean, they literally flat out told him like, "Don't do this. Like, we need to like get out and yep. bubble." He's like, "I don't care." Yep. So, um, but anyway, back to the. It's never really a good thing when he shows up. No, never. It, uh, yeah, never. he's never. I mean, like. They've, uh, I don't want to say they've done good things. They, they're they just kind of like chaos walking. And when you see them, it's like, oh, crap. Like Yeah, something bad always happens. Yeah. Because we know where he ends up and everything. Um, yeah, I mean, the clone stuff is very interesting. It's very, very interesting. I don't know where it's exactly headed. Um, I mean, obviously, season three is upon us and it's, 
for at least the beginning of it, it's going to be about getting Omega back. Yeah. What does Hemlock have planned for the moment right now? Want. Yeah. Like what is the exact goal? Uh, that's all still up in the air. Um, but either way, I thought that I thought what they did was very well done. I did not expect. Um, I did not expect it to end with Omega getting captured and us not yeah. actually going to Mount Tantus. Like, yeah. And, and crosshair still sitting on the table, like <laughs> under the spell. Like I did not expect the season to end that way. It was a bleak I'm very ending. happy it did though. It was a very bleak ending. Yeah. Like it was no happy ending. Like it was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, all right, Brian, well, well predictions for season three, things that you would like to see right out the gate. Um, I imagine we're getting it. I want to see Mount Tantus. I want to know what's happening on. I, I think Mount there. Tantus needs to be like a second think, home location in season. Three. Yes. I, I, cause they dropped that tease at the very end of number one. And then we are at season one. And then we barely spent any time this whole entire season. Mm -hmm. So it, it has to be the main focus in season three. Agreed. So Agreed. yeah. Yeah. I, I think we need to see that stuff right away. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to Mount Tantus being like a second location stop for the entire season and it being yeah, a very yeah. important part. Cause honestly, this is probably the only time that we will ever see Mount Tantus. And probably. Um, I don't know unless it like, you'd have to revisit the prequel era and that's kind mm -hmm. of not a thing right now. Yeah. And it, it, there's no way it's making it out of the bad batch standing. As a standing structure. Back. We are with Andor and Obi-Wan. <laughs> But yeah, still. But those, are those are later on. Those are those are way later on. Yeah, um, those are at like the timeline is after this. I don't see and we don't Mount read Tantus, the Clone Wars specifically. I don't see there. Mount Tantus making it out of the Bad Batch as a standing structure. No, that thing's gonna ex they're gonna explode the mountain by mm -hmm. the end of it. I think so too. Yeah. Um, I'm excited though. I mean, if it's on it's track, we're gonna be getting the Bad Batch next spring, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, if they keep on track like they did this year, dropped in January, and we just finished it in the middle of April or the beginning of April, excuse me, end of March. Uh, so two months worth of Bad Batch. Uh, really looking forward to season three. Yeah. I think there's some very exciting possibilities for where that story can go because uh, we're left on the biggest cliffhanger so far. Very good cliffhanger. Yeah. Very, very good cliffhanger. Yeah. So. Big, big one. Yeah. Very much. Exactly. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to conclude our. Uh, Fandalorian episodes of the Bad Batch. You will only see the Mandalorian version going forward for just the next two weeks. If you did not, yeah. go ahead and check out uh, this week's episode of the Mandalorian Review, which we had Mr. Thomas Harper on with us yesterday. Um, he is part of the Schmodown community, very big on the Star Wars community as well, as far as trivia goes. Big champion nerd. in multiple facets when it comes to Star Wars. Big, big Y Wing fan, big which nerd. I'm sure we talked hey. about. I'm sure it got brought up. Uh, and yeah, so we'll have that for the next two weeks, and then we'll get a nice little breather from Star Wars um, before we head so back bad. up later on this year. So uh, thank you guys so much for hanging on, enjoying our, our Bad Batch reviews. We really enjoy doing this. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. Make sure you're checking out everything else going on in Apocalypse. And uh, we hope you guys have a great rest mm -hmm. of your day. Bye, guys. <laughs>